And our opener, Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks versus the Side Owls and Dante Martin. Where to begin? Well, let's begin with old Dante Martin here. That's, Holy smokes, this kid. Well, 20 years old. Him. All right. So I'm watching Dante Martin. He's in the ring with Omega and the Bucks and the Side Owls. But it's specifically, the first half of the match when the, the baby faces are running wild, he's in there with Matt Seidel. They're both doing aerial moves. And Dante Martin is blowing him out of the water. Do you want to know why? Do you want to know the secret of Dante Martin? Tell me, Brian. The secret is that this fucking kid can jump so high. Yes. So all things being equal, everything he does looks better because he jumps so high first. If he's going to do a hurricane, jumping Hurricane Rana, first he jumps 15 feet in the air, yes. and then on the way down he does a Hurricane Rana. Yeah. Or he's going to do a springboard into something, but he springboards 15 feet in the air and then does the move. Everything that he did that involved jumping... I could not believe how high he jumped before executing all of these maneuvers. Jim Ross's line, gravity has nothing to do with him. Well. That's, that's, that's poetic right there, and it's exactly right. Gravity does not like Dante Martin. It's, it's, like, it's like disrespectful, disdainful to Dante. Away with you, gravity says, and he flies off. So among his drop kicks and his hurricane ranas and, and high crosses and whatever the hell else he did, there is a point where he's outside the ring with somebody, and of course he wants to do another big dive. So he has to get from inside the ring to outside the ring. He does this by jumping from the floor, basically backwards, flying through the middle and top rope, and landing on his feet in the ring. Now he got a hand on the apron, and his hand is on the ropes and something, but I watched this like a dozen times, trying to figure out how it made sense. You mentioned... The Olympics were just on. My wife watched a lot of the Olympics. Probably not as much gymnastics as, as your wife did, but she watched swimming because my wife was a swimmer. But she watched some of the gymnastics, and I was in the room working as the gymnastics were on. I was not blown away for anything in the Olympic gymnastics competition like it was for Dante Martin in this match. Well, part of that, Vinny, is because I don't think you totally get gymnastics. Sure. Like, you don't really understand what's going on. Sure. But And because you're watching Dante Martin, you know what all of these moves normally look like. Yes. But your brain cannot comprehend that he does them so high. I didn't. It's ridiculous. I watched this fucking backflip from the floor into the ring like five, uh, way more than that. I don't understand how he's able to pull it off. It, it looked like a, a video game. It looked like a CGI effect. Well, it's not only that, Vinny, but everything that he did looked so spectacular. Mm -hmm. In a match with three heels who are absolutely fantastic workers. Also true. And so not only did they allow him to do everything that he does that looks fantastic, but they designed a match so that when he began doing near falls oh. at the end, th these fans were going absolutely th th nuts. This is the key. And th this is why on another night this finish may have sent me in, 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 into a blind rage, but you could tell they, they know the match was built to showcase Dante Martin, even though, spoiler, he was eventually beaten. They get the heat on Mike Seidel. Matt Seidel gets a hot tag, but then he is cut off. But then Dante comes in without a save, and he runs wild, taking out the Elite to set up his own hot tag, which was then awesome. So he's flying. I, I'm, many years ago, for the newsletter, I would watch and review CMLL Wrestling, Lucha Libre, every week. And it happened to be the time when a young man by the name of Mystico was being the biggest star in the country. I was watching Dante Martin here saying, this is Mystico without a mask. <laughs> the same vibes. I, I, he, was, he was the star of the week. There's no question about that. Dante Martin wins this week. In fact, yes, I'm going to take my vote away from EEW. Just give it to Dante Martin. So eventually, because the side owls were wiped out, he is triple teamed to death. He eats a bunch of V-triggers, but he also manages to avoid several other moves. Kenny goes for the one-winged angel. Dante avoids that, makes a comeback. It's another V-trigger. Kenny tried something else. I forget what, but uh, eventually, Dante was finally overwhelmed by the heavyweight champion of the world and the tag team champions of the world. He, hits a, he eats a one-winged angel, eats a triple BTE trigger, and he was pinned. Now, But you know what, Vinny? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. I'm going to tell you why. I'm listening. Because 
whenever Dave talks about stipulations in WWE and NXT and AEW, the audience of each company is going to believe what they have been taught by that company. Yes, you will have eggs on Twitter that don't get it, but that's fine. Forget them. The actual loyal viewers of AEW, the loyal viewers of WWE, they are going to they are going to eat what they are fed. Okay, if you watch WWE and Ricochet has a fantastic performance, and then they pin him, you know, as a viewer of WWE, that means that they have no faith in the guy because he is too small. And he is the guy that does the jobs, okay? That's what they have taught you over X number of years. In AW, largely because of Darby Allen, mm. we have learned that you are going to lose on your way up. You're going to win matches, and then you're going to go up against someone better, and you're going to lose. And then you're going to win matches, and you're going to go up against somebody better, and you're going to lose. And you're going to go up against somebody better one day, and you're going to beat them, and it's off to the races. Dante Martin losing, it doesn't matter. The guy got over huge. There isn't one viewer of AEW that sees him lose and has the WWE mindset that, oh, he's a geek. They're burying him. He's never going to get a push. Everybody watching this knows he's 20 years old. He's a young lion. He is going to lose. And someday he is going to win. That's the way the audience has been trained. And it's going to pay off for that audience at some point. So that's the important stuff of this match. I do want to add a few, two more details. Uh, Nick Jackson's entrance. <laughs> He's amazing. <laughs> I believe. He's the greatest. I'm not sure, but I may enjoy Nick strutting slash dancing, whatever you want to call it. I may enjoy that more than his wrestling. And that is very high praise. And then also, not pertaining to this match, well, a little bit, but uh, the announcers very, very casually mentioned that Kenny Omega will defend the title against Christian Cage and all out in the main event. More to come. We have one more. Oh, we do? Yeah. This is from uh, TL. There's nothing scary about you, chap, no matter how dangerous of a technician. You look more like a male aesthetician, cocking your chest out with that definition. No, I don't mean Zack Sabre, supporter of labor. He's one of the best. I'm talking about that man with no heart, Brian Alvarez, the real chicken chest. I'm disgusted. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.